Hello, and welcome to the Yoga Studies Institute. My name is Bob Serino, and I'm so grateful that you chose to practice with us today. Here at YSI, we do yoga different. A lot of people just think about yoga as the outer practice of how we put our body in space. But at the Yoga Studies Institute, we focus on combining the inner world with the outer world, which is what yoga was originally intended to be. It's yoga that changes your world, not just your body. We source our information from the most classic and authentic texts in yoga, and we offer that to you through daily meditations, through daily asana practices, and through our rich assortment of courses on our platform. So if you wanna dig in and truly experience yoga and feel happier and healthier and full of purpose, then you've come to the right place. Develop a daily practice with us and see the change for yourself. Welcome to the Yoga Studies Institute. My name is Lydia, and today I'm going to share a 30-minute Dharma yoga practice with you today. Before we get on our mat and get started with our yoga poses, I would like to set an intention for today's class using Master Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, chapter 1, verse 31, where he says, Dukkha, Dharmanasya, Angam, Eja Yatva, Shvasa, Prashvasa, He's telling us that all five of the layers of our body are connected. He says the mind flies off, and with that comes pain in the body, unhappy thoughts, shaking hands in other parts of your body, the breath falling out of rhythm as it passes in and out. So he's telling us that our outer physical body is connected to our breath, and our breath is connected to our prana. Our prana is connected to our thoughts, and our thoughts are connected to planting seeds in our mind. And all of this is possible because of this mechanism of the little pocket of emptiness, this layer of pure potential. So today, I would like us to use thoughts of love and compassion throughout our practice. And let's see if that increases our ability to use our body with more strength, with more grace. Let's see how it affects our breathing. So closing our eyes, bringing our hands to the center of our chest. Let's think of someone that we would like to dedicate our practice to, maybe a loved one, maybe a coworker, or if we want an extra challenge, maybe someone that we don't like so much. And think about dedicating our physical effort, our practice to them with thoughts of love and compassion, wishing that they receive the benefits of this practice. Imagining how their life would improve. We'll begin with an ohm. Inhale. Oh. Coming to our mat, let's begin with some sun salutations. Surya Namaskar. Feet together, legs engaged, tucking the tailbone, palms together at the center of our chest. On the inhale, arms go up and back. Hands down to the mat. Uttanasana, you can bend your knees as much as you need to. We're just getting started. Right foot steps back, right knee drops down, looking up. Left leg comes back, a nice strong plank. Knees, chest, chin, down to the mat. Coming through Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Tucking our toes, pushing back. Adha Mukha, downward facing dog. You can bend your knees as much as you need to here. Maybe pedal out one heel at a time. Taking a big step forward with our right foot in between our hands. Left knee drops down, looking up. 
The left leg meets the right at the top of the mat. Uttanasana. Palms together. Arms come up and back. Hands to the center of the chest. Again, arms up and back. Hands down to the mat. Uttanasana. Left leg steps back. Left knee drops down. Looking up. Palms on the mat. Right foot steps back. Knees, chest, chin. Down to the mat. Coming through. Bhujangasana. Cobra pose. Shoulders down and back. Tucking our toes. Pushing back. Downward facing dog. Bringing the belly button towards the spine. Imagining the crown of your head is able to touch the mat. Left foot steps forward. In between the hands, right knee drops down. Looking up. Right foot steps forward to meet the left. Uttanasana. Palms together. Arms go up. Hands to the center of the chest. Again, arms up and back. Hands down to the mat. Uttanasana. Let's stay here a little bit longer. Bend in your knees as much as you need to. Let's place our fingers underneath our heels. Allowing our chest and thighs to meet. Maybe your face is close to your shins or your knees. Pulling up through your fingertips. And if it's available to you, then go ahead and straighten your legs. Putting a little bit more weight in the front part of your feet. Shoulders close to the knees. Releasing our hands down to the mat. Right foot steps back. Right knee drops down. Looking up. Putting that right foot firmly on the mat. You can interlace your hands, pushing that front left thigh away from the body. Or interlacing your hands, Kali Mudra, index finger extended, arms overhead. Nice and straight. Arms are going up and back as the hips are going down and forward. You can shake out your shoulders. And releasing this pose, hands down to the mat, left leg steps back, nice strong plank. You can do knees, chest, and chin, or chaturanga. Coming through, Urva Mukha, or Cobra, pushing back, downward facing dog. Taking a big step forward with our left foot in between our hands, coming up to warrior one. Our hips are squared, facing forward, shoulders down and back, belly button pulling back towards the spine. Opening up to a warrior two. As we gaze over our front left hand, we're gonna bring all of our attention to the space, the center of our chest. Recalling to mind our intention to use thoughts of love and compassion, dedicating our practice to someone else and seeing how that ripples out and affects our prana, our breath and our body. Let's take a challenge, moving into warrior three. You can step the right leg a little bit forward, getting more weight on that front left leg. Hands interlace behind us as we lift that right leg, extending our arms nice and straight. Pick a point you want to focus on, a dursti. 
gently releasing, bringing that left arm down to the mat on the outside of the right foot, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon, opening up the right side of our body, if it's available, looking up towards the ceiling. Coming down gracefully into warrior two. Spiraling hands down to the mat. Right knee comes down, touching the mat, creating a nice little 90 degree angle box. Bringing our right hand on the outside of our right leg, left hand behind us. We begin to twist to the left. Returning our head back to center, releasing this pose. Right arm extends, nice and tall, elongating the side of our body, crossing on the outside of our right thigh, making a fist with our left hand, pushing down into our right palm as we twist, looking up towards the ceiling. If you'd like to go for a challenge, you can try the bind today, helping your right arm underneath your thigh, left arm behind you, maybe grabbing your fingertips or your wrist, twisting, looking up. Releasing this pose, hands down to the mat, left leg steps back, a nice strong plank, knees, chest and chin, or chaturanga, coming through Urva Mukha, or Bhujangasana, pushing back, downward facing dog. Again, you can bend your knees if you'd like to. Imagining the crown of your head is able to touch the mat. Opening the range of motion in your shoulders. Taking a big step forward with our right foot in between our hands. Coming up, warrior one. Shoulders down and back. Opening up to a warrior two. Again, recalling to mind the intention we set at the beginning of the class. Dedicating our physical efforts to someone else. Using our thoughts of love and compassion, we'll take them into our next pose, warrior three. You can step that back leg forward, giving a little more weight on that front right leg. Arms interlace, Kali Mudra. Leg extended. Pick a Dursti, a place you want to focus on. Releasing right hand to the outer edge above the right foot, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Opening up, gaining your balance, and then if it's available to you, looking up. Gently coming down to a warrior two. Hands down to the mat, right knee down to the mat, comes forward, creating a nice little 90 degree angle box. Putting our left hand on the outside of our right thigh, right hand behind us on the small of our back. We twist to the right. Turning our head back to center, elongating the left arm nice and tall, crossing on the outside of our body, making a fist with our right hand, 
pushing down, looking up. If you tried the bind on the other side, you want to do so here as well. Thread that left arm underneath your leg, right hand behind you, either grabbing fingertips or your right wrist. Everybody looking up. Releasing this pose, hands down to the mat, right foot steps back, nice strong plank, either knees, chest and chin, or chaturanga, coming through, cobra or up dog, pushing back, downward facing dog. Arms engaged, pushing the mat away from our body. Belly button pulling back towards the spine. Taking a big step forward, that right foot in between the hands. Left knees dropping down. You can stay here or interlacing the hands, pushing that front thigh away from the body. Engaging the left leg and the left buttocks to protect our lower back. You can also interlace your hands, Kalvi Mudra, arms straight, and then begin to bring them up and back. So our hips are going down and forward, and arms are up and back. Releasing our hands down to the mat. Left leg comes forward, meaning the right at the top, Uttanasana. Hands, fingers underneath our heels, bending our legs as much as we need to. Chest and thigh meets. And then if it's available to us, extending our legs. Releasing our hands, palms together, arms come up and back. Hands to the center of our chest. Kneeling on our mat. Let's do some Gomukhasana arms. <laughs> we'll start with our right arm elongating, bending our elbow. We can use our left hand to help push our elbow down slightly. Our right palm is on our back, left hand extended, thumb towards the floor, bending our elbow. Now, if your fingers touch, that's wonderful. If not, go ahead and grab your shirt, or you can use the strap. If your hands are able to interlace, go ahead and do the yogi grip. Our chin is parallel to the floor. The back of our head is slightly pushing into our right arm. Releasing gently, other side. Left arm extended, nice and tall, elongating the side of our body. Bending our elbow, we can use our right hand to push that left elbow down. Again, palm touching our back, right arm extended, thumb down towards the ground, bending our elbow. You can grab your shirt or if it's available to you, maybe your fingertips touch. And then if you have more mobility, go ahead and do that yogi grip. Chin parallel to the ground, back of our head slightly pushing into our left arm. Mm -hmm. 
releasing our hands. We'll move into an inversion. If you have a headstand in your daily practice, you're more than welcome to do so. For those of you who do not have a headstand yet, I recommend learning that in person from a qualified teacher. And I will cue Shashankasana, hair pose, which gives us all of the benefits of an inversion without putting ourselves at risk. So let's put our hands on our feet, looking up towards the ceiling, opening the chest, lowering your chest to your thighs, placing the crown of your head on the mat, then lifting up your hips. If you're not able to keep your hands on your heels, no big deal. Just pull out your hands, palms down on the mat. Bring all of your attention into the space between the eyebrows. You can imagine a rose or a lotus. All of our fresh, clean, oxygenated blood is flowing to this place, the center between our eyebrows, our sixth energy center, the Ajna Chakra, our seat of all hall intuition. Releasing our hips down over our heels. We'll rest for a moment in child's pose. If you took headstand, go ahead and take a few breaths here in Palasana, allowing your forehead to rest on the mat. Palms facing up. On an inhale, lifting our chest up. Let's bring our seat to the left, legs around to the right, line on our back. We'll prepare for shoulder stand, Salamba Sarvangasana, with our hands firmly placed on the mat. We're gonna have our legs come up and over into plow pose first. Bringing our legs up and back. If your legs do not touch the ground, go ahead and support your back with your hands. If your legs do touch the ground, wonderful. You can interlace your fingers, getting on the tippy tops of your shoulders. And then if it's available to you, extending your legs. Closing our eyes, bringing our attention to the space between the eyebrows. Imagining a rose or a lotus. Bringing our hands to support our back. Lifting one leg up at a time. Pointing our toes, trying to get to the tippy top. As if they were going to touch the ceiling. If you have lotus pose, you can do so with your legs at this time. Releasing, bringing your legs down to Halasana. If you have lotus, keep your lotus. Hugging your lotus or Pindasana. Or Halasana plow pose. Gently releasing this pose, bringing our hands down to the mat, palms on the mat, gently lowering your hips, placing your hips on your forearms. 
If you have the lotus, you can keep it. If you have the straight legs, go ahead and have your legs extended. Everybody propped up on your elbows, allowing the crown of your head to touch the mat. Matsyasana, fish pose. If you have your legs in lotus, you can go ahead and grab your toes, your big toe. Releasing our head from this pose, releasing your legs if you had them in lotus, extending our arms to the sides, allowing our hips to go to the right, knees come up, allowing our legs to fall to the left hand side, our gaze to the right. Use the back of the left hand pushing into the floor to twist even further. Releasing this pose, bringing our legs back to center. Walk your hips to the Left hand side of your mat, knees to the chest, allowing the knees to fall to the right, gaze looking to the left. Again, using the back of the right palm, pressing into the floor as we twist even further to the left. Releasing your head back to center. Bringing the legs back to center. Arms extended, legs extended as we take Shavasana, our final relaxation. Closing your eyes. Bringing your attention to your left palm, left fingertips, relaxed. Bring your attention to your left wrist, left forearm, left elbow, relaxed. Left shoulder, left arm, loose and heavy. Bring your attention to your right hand your right fingertips, relaxed. Your right wrist, right forearm, right elbow, relaxed. Right shoulder, right arm, loose and heavy. Bring your attention to your left foot, your left toe, relax. Left ankle, left calf, left knee, relax. Left thigh, left hip, left buttocks, relax. Right foot, right toes, relaxed. Right ankle, right calf, right knee, relaxed. Right thigh, right hip, right buttocks, 
Lose and heavy. Lower back, relax. Middle back, loose and heavy. Upper back, melting into the mat. Abdomen and chest relax. Neck and face, relax. Now leave the body by itself. Take your mind to the center of the chest, recalling our intention to get, dedicate our practice to someone else. Using thoughts of love and compassion and investigate See how they ripple out through our prana, through our breath, through our body. Remembering that this is possible due to the mechanism of emptiness, the layer of pure potential. Bringing your mind back to your body. Begin to move your fingers and your toes. Rolling to your right hand side. When you're ready, you can come up to seat it. There's no rush. You can keep your eyes closed. We'll conclude today's practice with an om and three shantis. Bringing our palms to the center of our chest. Inhale. Aum. Shanti. 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 Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care and I hope to see you next time. Namaste.